Hey, I'm Mark, and this is my journey through tarot. Come on. So very interesting. Trump's former lawyers have now created a law firm and they're all jumping in. There's a bunch of them now. There's about five uh, folks formerly associated with Trump who've joined this law firm that was established by Bill Barr about a year ago and uh, more are coming on. So it could be up to eight, ten or more. So we'll see how that goes. That's what the reading will be about. I hope you like the video. If you like the video, please do like the video. And if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And uh, thank you very much for watching. So here we go. This is going to be all about the lawyers who were Trump lawyers uh, in some uh, form or fashion and who now have uh, gone in with Bill Barr and his new firm. So I say new firm. They say it was founded about a year ago by Bill Barr. And uh, so now Pat Cipollone, who he was the general counsel to the president, uh, you know, he was the president's lawyer, not Donald Trump's lawyer, but the lawyer to the president of the United States, whoever occupies that position, Pat Cipollone. And so he's the one who was found guilty in Georgia, along with Sidney Powell and Rudy Giuliani. And, uh, and so now he's joined to this law firm with Bill Barr, along with some others. Let's see what name were they. There was a Ted... Yuliat, who apparently was the Facebook general counsel, and this Ted uh, Yuliat, I'm sure I'm not pronouncing it correctly, uh, is formed this firm a year ago with uh, Bill Barr. Then there's from the White House, Patrick Philbin, don't know what he was or who he was, um, and my uh, television, my uh, screen just timed out on me, I gotta fix that. Uh, so uh, Patrick Philbin, and then Kate Todd, plus, uh, so that's five, and it could be up to eight or ten more who are actually part of this uh, new firm because they're apparently coming to this firm for some other firms around. They're uh, moving over. So, But before we do any of that, let's just have a moment of meditation. So, we'll start from the top with Bill Barr. So, what is the goal? What's the idea? In three cards for Bill Barr, what is his idea in forming this law firm? What was there? He doesn't do anything that's not, you know, thought through five or six chess moves in advance. So, Bill Barr, and to go in on it with this Facebook uh, general counsel, uh, Patrick, no, Ted Ulyat, Ulyat, U L L Y O T. So uh, in three cards, what was Bill Barr's intention? Three cards, one, two. And you've got to remember, like Pat Cipollone, I don't think he even practices law anymore. I believe his principal residence is actually uh, Puerto Rico. So let's see. Bill Barr's intention for having this uh, law firm. So we've got the Queen of Coins. Okay, that's money. Okay, it, it's about money. Um, then uh, Bill Barr's intention. So this is the Ace of Swords. You know, swords are truth, justice, rules, and law. And this is the Ace of Swords. So getting some justice for himself. You know, even these bad people feel like they're not bad. And then the last card, his intention was the Queen of Wands. Oh yeah, Wands are actions, plans, forward movement is getting, getting, getting it going. He's not a man to mess around. You know, he wanted that presidential job as attorney general and he in fact kind of auditioned for it with uh, uh, something he said online to Trump and that's how he ended up getting that job. So yeah, what was his idea behind this law firm? Uh, money, Queen of Coins, uh, Ace of Swords, getting some justice for himself, whether it's real just or not, what he feel like he deserved his justice. And the Queen of Wands, uh, he is a man of action, getting things uh, done. So interesting. So now what about uh, Pat's, uh, well, Ted Ulyat, so he started this with Bill Barr, so it's only right to kind of, and I don't know him, uh, I don't know anything about this guy, but, but so for Ted, what was uh, the reasoning? One, two, three. For Ted Ulyat, so you know, a year ago forming this 
this firm with Bill Barr? What was, what was the reasoning behind that? So again, we've got death. Death is telling you, an end. it's not actually death, usually seldom is, but it's telling you at the end of a cycle. So I'm, so I'm guessing, I guess his, his time with Facebook must have been coming to an end. So that was death. So the end of something, but then there's the beginning of something else. And then um, the hanged man, looking at things from another perspective. This is actually what you would be doing if you were looking for a job. You'd be looking at something else from a different perspective. And then the final uh, thing here is the four of swords. So the swords are truth, justice, rules, and law. And the four of swords is knowing when to take a break and not move at peril of perhaps getting uh, skewered by one of those swords. So it's a, 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 a lesson in patience regarding truth, justice, rules, and law. So yeah, it was a change of uh, pace for him. And uh, what was he going to do? And I think they opened this law firm knowing that nothing was going to happen with it for some time. It would just be... You know, like you open a storefront and uh, keep the door closed, the sign closed on the front door until they needed it, which is now apparently. And then the next one is going to be Pat Cipollone. Now, for me, he's the most interesting one because he's been convicted, okay, in, in Georgia. He uh, made a deal with uh, the prosecutors in Georgia. Three cards, Pat Cipollone. Now, a year later, joining that firm, what is his idea? What is the reason that he's partnered up with Bill Barr and this Facebook guy? Now, so the nine of cups, okay, cups are emotion, compassion, uh, heartfelt situations, and the nine of cups is someone wanting to be able to display their, their trophies, their wares. So maybe Pat Cipollone just wants to say, you know, I may be retired and, and living in Puerto Rico, but, uh, you know, this is some place I can hang up my shingle, my lawyer shingle, so that people know I'm, I'm still around. Uh, the next card is the ten of coins. Ten of coins, okay, so this is... Uh, familial uh, value. Coins are value. Ten of coins is familial value. And so maybe this is what he's going on here. He's trying to set up his family. And uh, and then the final one is the king of cups. It's emotional for him. Cups are emotions, uh, compassion. And so it's, it's all emotional for him. This is his uh, get my reputation back kind of thing and ensure the uh, welfare of my family in the future. Huh. Interesting. So it sounds to me like perhaps these guys are I expect to uh, take on serious lawsuits. But uh, but I wonder, so there were two more, Patrick Philbo and Kate Todd, but I'm not going to read on them because I don't know them, and I don't think any of us do, or not many of us do. But what I am going to say is, um, is this a company uh, for any kind of litigation or, you know, commercial litigation for them to make money, or is this a get back at Trump firm? Interesting. So three cards for that. Uh, what is the reason of this firm now, especially featuring all these previous Trump lawyers? Okay. Ah, secrets being revealed. What is the reason of this firm? There are secrets being revealed. That's the moon card. Um, the King of Wands. Now is the time for uh, grandiose action. Wands are actions, plans, forward movement. And the Eight of Cups, <sighs> okay, so the Eight of Cups is um, having to turn away from something of emotional importance to you um, and go in another direction. The purpose of the firm, secrets are being revealed. I, that has to be related to the Trump uh, debacle presidency. Uh, actions, being the king of your actions and um, and having to walk away, okay, having to walk away from that emotional hurt of what's just happened. All these people have been damaged uh, by their association with Trump. So walk away from that and uh, go on to something else. One more card. Uh, why this firm? And the Knight of Swords. Ju swords are truth, justice, rules, and all. The Knight is the fighter uh, for the royal court of those uh, things in this instance. And for instance, so this is just the beginning of uh, getting their uh, reputations back. That's what this is. Hang on, I'm gonna show you the card. Okay, so this is the newest edition. This is uh, the second time I purchased from this group. Uh, and uh, the, these cards are called Revival Art Tarot, second edition. And uh, they're from Taracho uh, Studios, which you can see right here. And they come to me, for, I think it's from Russia via the Netherlands, but uh, they're a lot of money, and um, but they're beautiful cards and you'll see. So they come in a very typical little cardboard box, no big deal there at all. 
Um, then the um, instruction booklet, again, is not uh, anything to write home about. It's just a typical little instruction booklet. The one good thing is that it is easily uh, read. And uh, in the uh, regular, uh, in the lower arcana cards, they've got an extra card in each uh, suit. So you know, you've got cups, wands, swords, and uh, I can never think of the forward suit off the top of my head, uh, pentacles. Uh, but so you, they go all the way to the 10 of, of swords, for instance. The next one then should be a page, but here we have a princess of swords. And then after the princess of swords, you still get the page, the knight, the queen, and the king. So you have one extra card for each of those four suits. So instead of 78, uh, 79, uh, 80, 81, 82 cards total in the pack. So that's interesting. So if that princess um, confused you, you could just take those four cards out and use them for some special occasion or never use them at all, or put them in there. And uh, this gives you an idea of how to divide the extra card. Uh, so very interesting. Then the cards themselves, they're really good stock. Uh, once you get them broken in, and what I mean by that is, you know, when they come off uh, production, they're really pressed together, and there's no air between the cards, and you can't hardly get between them. So it takes a little bit of shuffling and, and getting them uh, some air between the cards uh, before they're usable, really, and, uh, and not sticking to each other. And then the back of them is beautiful, and I haven't discovered anything particularly unusual about the back, um, except maybe until this very minute. Let's see. If you have the cards this way, you'll notice that there's a very small little rose right here. So if you see that small rose here up in the right-hand corner, then you know this card is going to be upright as it should. However, if this card was inverted, that small little rose becomes two roses. Okay, so if you see it, two roses up here rather than one, then you know that card is going to be inverted. So that's the example. Uh, I like knowing that. I don't know. It just gives you a little edge uh, when you're dealing the cards. And now I can straighten them out and not have to turn it over. I know that this, this is uh, inverted and this is straight. Now, to look at this art is amazing. And each one of these is a work of art that's referenced in the guidebook. For instance, uh, if I look at this uh, Fool, number one, with the Major Arcana, and it tells me that the Fool uh, is, in fact, the name of that piece of art is called A Jester by Philippe Mercier. And, um, and then it gives me the uh, divination for the card. Um, beginnings, uh, possibilities, pleasure, etc. The next card, the magician, if you were to see that one, that is a work of art called The Astronomer by uh, Candlelight. The Astronomer by Candlelight. And it's by, I guess it's going to be Gary Du. So uh, my foreign pronunciations aren't very good, but I do give it a try. So the cards themselves, you can see they go right to the edge of the card. They're beautiful pieces of art. And thought has gone into choosing these cards for the um, uh, position they stand for. The one thing uh, that's not uh, evidence, for instance, um, they're not always um, clear that, for instance, a two of pentacles is a two of pentacles. It might not have two pentacles on the card to tell you that. So they're a little um, interesting there. You should kind of look through the cards and understand what each one stands for first. But, I mean, look at them. They are absolutely beautiful. And it always feels to me like uh, intention has gone into making the selections of these actual pieces of art before uh, they uh, turn them into uh, tarot cards. And I like that. And I think you like them, too.